Good morning, Walden Church. Uh, every Monday, our men's group gets together and we have a little time of prayer and Bible study. That's every Monday at 9.30. Nothing to sign up for. You can drop by any time. And we we're talking about the, like the need or the impulse to have a new cell phone, right? And we were talking about how some people can't wait to get the newest model. They wait in line for hours and uh, they wanna have all the, the latest features. And it probably will not surprise you that none of us wanted that. <laughs> none of us wanted a new cell phone. My cell phone is years and years old. I have no desire to replace it, zero. I don't need more features. I barely use all the features that I have because uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't wanna learn the new features. That's possible, that is possible. Or maybe it's because I can sense that I'm on the side of life that's slowing down, right? My, I don't sense my life is in the speeding up rat race pace anymore. Besides, when they show all those phone commercials, it's always for better or stronger or faster this or that, and they say, you know, with this new cell phone, you'll be able to get it all done. Get what done? <laughs> I mean, really? Do I need to do more? Do I need to accomplish more? You know, we've been looking at saying yes this fall. We said yes to God, yes to wise living, yes to new, yes to being thankful, and I just wonder, should we be just saying yes to everything? I mean, there has to be some discernment, right? There has to be some times that we say no, right? Do we need to get more and more done? Is that life? Or does that rat race busyness feel more like life is passing you by? There's a story in Mark chapter one. It says, rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him and they found him and said to him, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. So Jesus is in Capernaum and his disciples go looking for him. They find him, he's all by himself. And they say, why are you all alone? Everyone is looking for you. Why is everyone looking for Jesus? Well, because he's Jesus, right? He's been healing, he's been preaching, he's been teaching, he's been fixing stuff, he's been getting stuff done. And his disciples find him and they say, come on, man, daylight's burning, we, we got more to do, let's get out there. And Jesus says, eh, let's leave. Let's leave? A whole village wants him to stay. They're all looking for him. And he says, no, I gotta go. Which means sometimes you say yes to saying no, right? There are times where we say yes, but there also have to be times where we say no. There's this opportunity for Jesus in Capernaum to do much good, help so many people, and he turns it down. He says no. So Jesus doesn't do everything. How could Jesus walk away from a village of people that want him to stay? How could he walk away from the opportunity to do even more good? Well, all through the Gospels, there is a reoccurring phrase that pops up again and again. I'm going to read a couple of them, and I want to see if you can, if you can spot it. Okay, see if you can spot this. Luke 9, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Luke 13, then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Luke 17, while he was on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. Luke 18, then he took the 12 aside and said to them, behold, we are going up to Jerusalem and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the son of man will be accomplished. Luke 19, and Jesus said this, he went on ahead 
going up to Jerusalem. I don't know. I don't know. You read this <laughs> and you think to yourself, hmm, I think Jesus is going somewhere, <laughs> right? But he's not going somewhere like some pre-programmed robot, right? It's not like that. And he's not being some, you know, bratty kid just saying, I won't stop, I won't stop, I won't stop. That's, that's, not, that's not it either. It's, it's more than that. It's, it's Jesus recognizing that he can't be everywhere at once, right? He can't be all things to all people. He has a mission. He's going to Jerusalem. He has a compass. He has a path. He has an orientation. He has a way. And if Jesus says no, it's because he's already said yes to something else. He's already said yes to Jerusalem. That's his path. Jesus often spoke about his mission, the reason that he was sent. John 18, he says, For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. In Luke 19, he says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus makes it very clear. He has an orientation. He has a path. He has something that he is pursuing. He has a direction that he is going. He has something that he has already decided to say yes to. He has fixed himself on a path, right? And I would offer that if you are super busy, you get a lot done, and now you're looking ahead at Thanksgiving and at Christmas, and you're dreading even more busyness, even more tasks, even more things to do, Ask yourself, and just be honest, do you have a hard time saying no? Last week, we said Thanksgiving comes before Christmas, right? Thankfulness comes before blessing. Well, yes comes before no. Yes comes before no. We can say no to the good things in life. I think that bears repeating. We can say no to the good things in life when we first said yes to the best. When we first said yes to the best. You, you, you can't even say no to something until you've already said yes to something else. So it's not a surprise that the disciples find Jesus alone and he's praying. It's because, it is because everyone has expectations about him. It is because everyone has an opinion about who he is and what he should do and how he should serve and what he should look like and how he should act. So he withdraws. He withdraws. Listen to that. Jesus, who was perfect, who was our model, our teacher, he withdraws. He takes a quiet time to listen to God all so that he can just reorientate his soul. Psalm 46 says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Jesus is listening. He is still. He is aligning himself with God's plan so that he stays on God's plan, so that he stays on track, so that the other voices and all the busyness doesn't derail him. But that might disappoint some people. He, he's going to let people down. Isn't he worried about what other people think of him? No. Jesus is willing to go against the expectations that everyone has of him. He has to be true to his mission, to testify to truth, and to seek and to save the lost. You see, Jesus knows what he has to do. He's already said yes to the mission. He's already said yes to the plan. He's already said yes to Jerusalem. And so now he can discern as he walks. And he can say no to good things because he has already said yes to the best. Besides, you never see Jesus just like in any story, like after the story's over, he doesn't ever just flop to the ground, right? And say, man, I'm busy. 
Hey, Jesus, how are you doing? Busy. Whoo, busy. You never, you never see that. You never even feel that. You never feel that tension from him. Not that he doesn't ever get distracted. He does. I mean, much of the stories about Jesus are him stopping along the way to answer a question or to heal somebody, but it's only temporary. He pauses temporary and he gets right back on the road. He gets right back on track. Danish theologian Soren Kierkegaard says, in prosperity, may you grant perseverance to will one thing. Amid distractions, collectedness, to will one thing. In suffering, patience, to will one thing. A hundred things? No. One. One thing. A person who says yes to that one thing in their life, they know what their life is about. You have, you have breath, right? You have soul, you have spirit, and all of that needs focus, it needs direction, or else you'll be pulled in a hundred different directions. You'll be pulled into busyness. You'll be spread too thin. And you'll be chasing after good. Kierkegaard says, will one thing. Will one thing. And one thing, one thing seems easy, doesn't it? One thing seems easy. In fact, one thing doesn't feel like enough. Okay, but just compare that with today. You find yourself saying, we are so busy. How are you guys doing? How, you, how have you guys been? Busy. Why? <laughs> Why? Because busyness is an addiction. Busyness is a drug, isn't it? Now, I'm not saying there won't be seasons in life. There are seasons in life and, and there will be busyness in life. Things will pick up at work. Things will, you know, come unglued at home for a little while. You'll have trouble with school uh, and you'll need to examine the demands that those things make on your life. But also examine how those things align with God's plan for your life. Romans 8 says, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. See, it's, it's his purpose and it's his plan. Yes, those things come. Yes, they create busyness for a while. But remember, Jesus, he would take care of that and he would get right back on the path and head towards Jerusalem. Look at John 11. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Isn't that ironic that the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus loves this family, loves Mary, loves Martha, loves Lazarus, and the moment he hears that his good friend whom he loves is on death's door, he does nothing. What do we learn from Jesus? Know your yes. Know your yes. Jesus does not say yes to every need because he has already said yes to the most important need. He has said yes to the thing that God has called him to. And before you can say no to all the good earthly things that will ask you for help, you have to have first said yes to the one thing that God has called you to. What has God called you to? Have you sought that direction? Have you prayed that prayer? Are you on that path? So the question is, you know, if you are bogged down, if you are overwhelmed, and the holidays, you know, are only going to make it worse, and you know you, you're doing way too much, where are you supposed to be going? Where is your Jerusalem? What are you supposed to be doing? 
You can say no if you know that you have already said yes to God. I have said yes to you. I have said yes to you. I have said yes to all the things that go along with that yes, the feeding, the equipping, the caring, the listening, the accountability. I have said yes to being a husband to Joanna. I have said yes to being a father to our two boys. But when busyness comes around, when obligation comes around, I find myself pulling away from my job, pulling away from my family, and then doing all the little piddly stuff. So how do you say no to that stuff so that you can say yes to the right stuff? Just be honest. Just be honest. Some things in life have to get done, and some things don't. If you're honest, you can make the right choice a priority. Some people say no for the right reason. Some people say no because they just want to get out of something. They don't want the obligation. They're lazy. Ephesians says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. We are still called to live wise. It doesn't mean you can just say no to everything just to get out of an obligation, right? We still have to live wise. We have to make the most of every opportunity, like this says, as we seek the Lord's will. A number of years ago, I heard about a pastor who was uh, at the beach with his wife and two kids, and they were walking along the sand, and his kids were picking up seashells, uh, except they weren't like full shell shells. They're, you know, they're always a little bit broken here and broken piece there. They're pretty, right? But they're never like a full, perfect, pristine shell. It's always like, you know, shell pieces that are floating up in the water. And the kids were running around and they were picking up all these handfuls of shells and they were trying to make a game out of it and see, well, who can, who can pick up the most, right? And suddenly the family saw something that was floating out on the water. It wasn't too far away. And they stopped to watch what it was and they realized that maybe about 30 feet offshore, there was a giant starfish just bobbing up and down in the water. Now, if you're a kid, Getting your hands on a starfish, that's like gold, right? That's like, that's like you won, right? That's, that's striking gold. So after a while, they watched it. The youngest, he had his eye on it, and he said, that starfish is mine. And, and he went charging into the water to go get it. And he got, he got about halfway, and before he stopped, he came back. And the dad from the shore reassured him. He says, it's, you know, it's okay, buddy. It's all right. You can go out there. I'm watching you. You can go grab that starfish. So the kid goes back in after it got a little closer this time, but just before he made it all the way, he stopped again and came back. And the dad continued to encourage him. He says, you can do it. You were so close. You were almost there. Go back and just grab it. So the little boy runs out one more time. And this time he got almost all the way there, right next to the starfish. Literally all he had to do was reach out and pick it up. And instead, he turned around and went back to the beach. And the whole family is now watching and encouraging and yelling at him. And he says, buddy, you were right there. What's the problem? Just pick it up. And the little boy said, I can't. My hands are full of shells. Is that you? So busy because your hands are full of broken shells that you can't grab the starfish. Listen, before more obligation and more responsibility and more busyness and the holidays get here, name your shells. Name your shells. Once you know what you're supposed to say yes to, and only once you know then you can open up your hands and clearly see, these are the things that I need to get rid of. These are the things I need to let go of. Don't be so busy picking up and searching after and collecting all the good things that God has not called you to, that you neglect the best things that God has called you to. 
James 4 says, anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. If you need some help, here's some great ways to drop your shells. I'll, I'll give them to you, free of charge. This is my, this is my Thanksgiving gift to you. <laughs> you can say, sadly, we have something else going on. I have another commitment. I wish I were able to. I'm afraid I can't. I don't have the bandwidth for that right now. I'm honored you asked me, but I simply can't. Thanks for thinking of me. However, I am not able to. I'm sorry, I'm not able to fit this in. Unfortunately, I already have plans. Maybe next time. No thank you, but it sounds lovely. You don't even need to explain it. You don't, uh, you don't owe them an explanation. In fact, when you're decisive and when you're direct sometimes, that makes you look calmer. We all need a little break sometime. Even Jesus, even Jesus goes off by himself. So to be the healthiest and happiest version of yourself, you just need to lay down some boundaries. Whether you're at home or at work, knowing how to say no is a skill. And if you can learn how to do it, you will benefit from it for the rest of your life. Sometimes we have to say no to good things in order to say yes to the best things. And if you want to lead a meaningful life, it's going to require difficult but necessary decisions, discernment. It's a skill to learn to distinguish between seashells and starfish. May you drop your shells and may you pursue all the best things that God has planned for you. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this week and for what it brings. Families and friends, fellowship around the table and around food. Lord, we ask that you bless the conversations around those tables. Bless the food that have, and the hands that have prepared it. May you hear all of our prayers for all the things that we are thankful for, all the ways in which you bless us each and every day. Those things that we take for granted, Lord, we are so thankful for all the good things and all the best things. Help us to focus. Help us to find our Jerusalem, our direction, to pursue those best things as we follow you all the days of our life. Amen. Hey, that means the Christmas season is right around the corner. It's gonna be here before you know it. We wanna let you know that we've got a Christmas concert. You are welcome to come Bring your friends, bring your guests, bring your neighbors. December 10th and 11th, we have an identical concert each night. Pick the night that works the best for you. We're gonna have Advent uh, Sundays all through December. And so we'll be talking about the Christmas story and uh, just bringing Christmas and fellowship and joy. That's what we're really focusing on, joy. Preparing our hearts, preparing room for the Christ child. We'll have two services on Christmas Eve. We'll have a service at five o'clock and a service at seven. And again, both the services will be identical. Just pick the service that works the best for you. And then Christmas Day is a Sunday. It is a Sunday, but Walden Community Church will not be having any services that day. We want you to be at home and spending that time with your family. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.